What's going on everybody? Welcome to Miller Garage and today we are talking about Airstream polishing. Um, and I'm gonna start this video by uh, just gonna go ahead and shatter your, all your hopes and dreams <laughs> when it comes to Airstream polishing um, and tell you that there, there really is no shortcut to polishing an Airstream. Now, I know that the video is titled you know, like how to polish your Airstream faster or how to do it faster, whatever I end up uh, naming it, but um, there, there's really not like a shortcut. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some different tools and techniques that'll help make, you know, the job a little bit easier, more efficient, and a little bit faster. Um, but, you know, plain and simple, this is a very, you know, labor-intensive job. It's difficult. Um, it is very taxing on your body. Uh, between like the weight of the machine, the repetitive motion, and the vibrations that you encounter. Um, and so I just want to kind of, you know, go through some ways to make that a little bit easier and to refine uh, the process. And for this, you know, for the m majority of this video, we're going to be talking about the cutting stage, which is pretty much the most labor intensive part. Um, if you can get a good foundation of cutting and really get the aluminum, uh, you know, in a really good condition on that first stage, then it'll set up the whole rest of the process to be a lot better. So um, the first thing I wanna talk about in this video is I'm actually using a, uh, a another, a newer uh, buffing tool or polisher, whatever you wanna call it. Technically, it's actually a grinder. Um, <laughs> so this is a Milwaukee variable, variable speed uh, sander grinder. Um, and this is one of the, the six to seven inch ones. So these are the ones that have the really big grinding discs. And um, you can actually put an airway wheel on it. Um, Zephyr sells these metal flanges, which you absolutely have to use. Uh, and you remove the centers out of the airway wheels and then you mount it with the metal flange. Uh, if you use the plastic flange, it will explode, killing you and everyone else. So don't do that. Um, but why this is so good is because this is a 6,000 RPM grinder. So um, the wheel is going to be spinning a lot faster. Now, that's good in that you're going to remove material a lot faster, but on the flip side, it can be bad because you're removing material a lot faster. <laughs> so uh, two things that are going to happen is that if you are not doing it properly, you can warp the aluminum or actually grind too far, rather polish too far into uh, the aluminum, which will cause um, discoloration and, and you know, potential of further corrosion down the road. Um, so you do have to be careful with it. Um, and I'm gonna go through the process of that um, as I'm learning and refining. But basically, you're just, you're moving a lot faster. You're not staying in one spot for too long. Um, because you really don't want that aluminum to warp at all because once it warps, there's really not a lot you can do about it. Now, sometimes you get a little bit of, um, it'll kind of bow in a little bit and that's okay. Um, but there, it's just kind of finding that limit whenever it becomes too far. Um, so I just try to go a lot faster and just go back over it with more passes, but just going a lot faster. And I've found that this uh, probably speeds up the process by about 30% if I were to guess. So um, thus far I've been a really big fan of using this. Um, another thing that I actually just got this week that I'm absolutely loving is scaffolding. Because <laughs> I was using a ladder before and it was just really hard on my legs and having to be in a precarious position, you're always having to move, but this is just, this is the way to do it. So uh, like 160 bucks at Harbor Freight, 800 pound capacity, so uh, definitely holds me. It'll hold pretty much everybody else in the whole world out there. So <laughs> no worries there. Um, and then I want to show you one more thing. This is just kind of a little little bonus tip. Um, but I found that uh, whenever I was using that that the grinder, the 6,000 RPM one, it is a lot heavier than the Dewalt, and so my wrists would get tired a lot faster. It wears out your back and your arms. Um, and so I actually am just using some uh, like weightlifting wrist straps. And it's basically just the same concept as whenever you're bench pressing. Um, 
that whenever your wrist is supporting a heavy load, it just adds some support to it. And this has helped a lot, which is allowing me to polish for a lot longer. Um, and just as my endurance grows up with this, uh, obviously I'll be able to do it for more and more time and I'm finding that, but this is something that's been quite helpful in this process. It also kind of keeps your gloves in place. So, um, I used to get a lot of stuff that would go up my sleeve, but this helps a lot with kind of creating a seal there as well. So, um, I'm going to get all my protective equipment on and then we're going to start polishing and just kind of show you uh, what I'm doing with the, with the grinder to speed up the process. Um, again, it's, I wouldn't call this a shortcut because where you gain speed, you're having to be better when it comes to your technique and a lot more precise as well as um, that one's just, it's heavier, it's more vibration and it'll wear you out faster. So it's kind of one of those trade-offs that there is no, in life, there is no, there's no easy button. So, um, but there's things you can do to get better and to be smarter. And that's one thing that I really like to do. So I'm going to get the protective equipment on and then we're going to get polishing. All right. So I'm going to kind of explain, um, since I can't really put my mic on my shirt. Um, so I'm going to talk into it, explain what I'm doing and then demonstrate. So, um, so I'm going to kind of pick this section right in here and uh, I'm just going to basically be moving back and forth pretty rapidly, um, going over a section, reloading, uh, going up a little more, coming back down and just kind of working the area um, pretty quickly. And so I'll kind of hit an area, let it cool, move up, kind of come back, um, hit it again and um, just continue to really move the, the tool and keep you know continually loading polish into the the airway just so you're you know you're allowing the airway and the polish to do the work you don't need to bear down on it and really push it all really just the weight of the machine being set on it um, is good to get the results that you want so uh, i'm gonna get it fired up and get started on it
All right, so as you can see, um, does a pretty good job. Uh, I'll get some close-up shots of it, but um, obviously it goes a little bit faster. And um, again, you got to be moving the tool pretty fast. As you can see, I was always keeping it moving. I wasn't, you know, slowly progressing them. You know, you got to really be uh, smooth with your motion as well. So um, I found this thing is pretty phenomenal, and I've been using it on quite a bit of this trailer and just really enjoying the results. Um, this one had already been stripped, and so uh, there had been you know, a good amount of just overall oxidation that had been happening. So um, the cutting process, there's been a little bit more um, passes that I've had to make to get the results I want. There's, you know, there's more haziness as I am in the polishing process, and so I'm having to um, you know, work it a little bit more to get the results. Uh, like this, but again, um, you know, there's no, there's no magic bullet, but um, I think this is a, a way that I found that really helps me. Again, uh, if you haven't used, you know, something in a lower RPM range, more around like 3,000, like the, you know, the DeWalt's or the Makitas and stuff, um, I would definitely start there. Uh, I got this one because it's variable speed, so that enables me to really use, you know, whatever. Uh, whatever pad or anything like that I want with it. So you can start with this and start out slower and then work your way up as you get the hang of it. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're already done a little bit with uh, one of the other tools and this can kind of up your game in a way. So, uh, so I'm just going to continue polishing. Um, just as always, uh, this stuff is linked below. Uh, so if you buy it on Amazon through me, that helps me out and helps support the channel, which is awesome. Also, uh, watching the ads helps support the channel. So I really appreciate all the support, um, and it's been it's been really fun the past two weeks because I like I went out to Vegas and then I've had quite a few people uh, reach out to me, um, whether it's just for questions or to work on their trailers, um, and then I had some people who have been watching my channel stop by, and there's just been a lot of you know just cool interaction and support. So it's been really fun, um, and I just look forward to see you know how this is going to grow and where it's going to go. So, um, just been exciting stuff, so it's really cool, and I appreciate all of you, and all of your support, and all of your encouragement, and, uh, like I said, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and we will see you next week.